sound just like Def Leppard. Where's my record deal? The painful death. I mean, guys died yeah. painfully. What do you yeah, I know. All right, so it's episode 144, Radio Free Innsmouth. This week, kind of in the mood for some 80s style power metal, so we will be covering the old metal blade band Warlord. Anybody remember them? I'm just fucking with you. Of course, it's got to be Bill Scrunier. I've been putting this off for two weeks. The people, you, the people, want to hear about Bill Scrunier. So, if you don't know, what the hell is a Bill Scrunier? It's a German black metal band. Well, it's like one guy i think he hires session dudes to do drums or something but it's this one guy his name is marcus you know like marcus bill nye impersonation there whatever marcus hartman solo black metal project type thing it's also the name of thor's hall that he lives in if you go way back to uh germanic paganism esoterica but he's this guy he plays black metal And he definitely is sort of like the final evolution of a particular style of German black metal that starts way back with Absurd, goes through Thanor and Moonblood, that kind of very oyish, almost punky stuff. And I would say that the most recent Bill Skirnir material is the highest form of that idea. But here's what the first Bill Skirnir album sounds like. This is In the Flames of Purification. The title track off of the album In the Flames of Purification came out in 2002. Very heavy on this kind of 3-4 punkish sort of thing with these layered, wandering, but simple riffs. And it's pretty good stuff. There's a push-pull dynamic between that kind of 3-4 sort of waltzy black metal and this more 4-4 straight-ahead blasting stuff. It's kind of the main compositional dynamic of early Bill Skinner. Now this might be reminding you of something, that description, the way that these melodies are... And that very um, dingy ride symbol. Ding, 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 ding. Damn right, it's just like early Graveland. I think I did a Graveland episode. Everybody should know who Graveland is. That's like the original Polish black metal band. And so you have these three, four waltzy beats with uh, layered keyboards. In the case of Bill Skrinier, that's replaced with guitar layers. And a push-pull dynamic between more standard kind of 4-4 sections, such as this, very evil sounding, leading back into these more epic sounding 3-4 sections with that very meditated kind of like 6-8 beat with a ride cymbal or a hi-hat in this case you're, you're, you're marking out the shit with a cymbal as far as the beats go and then the actual drums and bass drums and whatnot are doing like a kind of like rolling motion but you might have noticed that sounded a little bit more evil than Bill Skirner. well that's because Bill Skirner being the uh inheritors of kind of the German black metal legacy have a melodic sense derived from bands such as Absurd who were very punkish and melodic they, they're they also known as like rock against communism bands basically right wing punk sort of bleeding over into becoming the nascent German form of black metal by the way this is supposed to sound like that they recorded this album in prison after they uh, well you know Fatality. Uh-oh. But that's the essential core of uh, Bill Skirnier as far as influences go. You got that fairly triumphant and peppy, but also melancholic sound of bands like Absurd. And then you have the compositional dynamics of a band like Graveland, specifically the first couple Graveland albums. In fact, on the first Bill Skirnier album, they covered that very Graveland song that I played for you earlier, entitled Barbarism Returns. So their second album steps up the production quite a bit. That first Bill Skinner album is extremely fucking raw. And their second album is still pretty raw sounding, but it's a bit clearer than that very staticky first one. Also, one might note a similarity in melodic character to uh, certain Slavic bands, particularly the uh, Blazebirth Hall stuff, which might just be parallel evolution. 
Or it might be because they are signed to the guy from Absurd, Hundred Moldus' label, Darker Than Black, which also signed and did reissues of a lot of the uh, Blaze Birth Hall bands and just general Slavic Natslav bands. So who knows, really. But this album, I think, is where Bill Spooner starts to really get good. That's a great riff right there. It's still in a minor key, but it sounds very triumphant. Moose trial. Excellent! I also like that kind of clean guitar that's just marking off the musical phrases, starts and stops with this little jangly bit. That has a lot of gray bland to it as well. The uh, right hand on the guitar is doing some very like kind of like this sort of jangly thing, which I believe is unique to heavy metal, that particular sort of picking style. It started way back in the 70s. The ancient ancestor of that style of black metal guitar picking can be found in the uh, British heavy metal of bands like Judas Priest, right here on Stained Class. Iron Maiden's pretty famous for it. You got like Black Sabbath doing that on Children of the Grave. But yeah, that's heavy metal to the bone. I'm sure there's somebody out there that is like, oh, well, actually, Buddy Holly fucking or some 50s dude that nobody actually listens to, but they pretend that they do. Hi, everyone. Anthony Fantano here, Internet's busiest music nerd. Guy did that back in, like, 1957, you dumb motherfucker. Blah, 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 blah. See, nobody cares. But that sort of palm-muted kind of galloping guitar motion is brought into black metal, mostly by, um, Graveland, but also Dark Throne and they get rid of kind of like the more aggressive edge of the mute to just kind of give it this wandering character. Both of those bands, of course, are heavily influenced by old school heavy metal, particularly Manila Road and such. In fact, your boy Jub might be rather fond of utilizing that particular guitar style in his own compositions. That kind of three four stuff that's big in this variety of black metal and I myself am not immune to the siren charms of that particular right hand picking style no sir so if those first two albums from Bill Skrineer you know like they're pretty good but in light of their later material they're honestly nothing amazing and i would say that bill skrineer got really really good with their third album votan's folk on this album the layers got a bit more detailed and it's more like this constant stream of melodic sound getting pumped directly into your eardrums it's all very catchy and it's still based around those kind of waltz beats and polka beats and whatnot but the production here is just a smidgen better than uh, even the best sounding of their earlier material. There's that jangle being used again. But I think on this album you really get a sense that he kind of has his own melodic voice. It's not necessarily just straight up Graveland or Absurd worship anymore. On this album when you hear the riffs you can tell, okay, this is Bill Skrineer. This is the Bill Skrineer melodic style. And it's very, very catchy. And I listened to this album quite a bit. Switching back into the 4-4 here with a very swampy, wet-sounding cymbal. Used to great ambient effect. The vocals are sort of this war chant kind of marching song. Very close attention has been paid to the cadence of how these vocals are utilized. So during the 4-4 parts, it's like, yeah, 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 yeah. And then like during the uh, more waltzy 3-4 parts, it's like very drawn out, yeah, screams that kind of follow the melody as sort of an extra instrument in a way. Like an additional rhythmic timekeeper that also brings its own texture to the music. But it's this final and the most recent Bill Skrineer album that is undoubtedly my favorite. It's what got me to listen to their band's back catalog a little bit more closely than I had in the past. And at this point, the show might just turn into me playing, hey, check out this cool part, check out this cool part. No, but no, well, this is even cooler. Look at this, fuck shit, ah. 
because I really like this final Bill Skernier album, Votan Redivivius. The drum technique here is at its peak. In fact, one might almost say that this album is a very danceable black metal album. It's almost kind of post-punky, maybe like uh, Joy Division or even New Order. Very head-banging, or head-bopping, almost more that than uh, just straight-up head-banging type stuff. Certified bop, YouTube. And on this one, he started to utilize these kind of choppier guitar phrases, so it's not just that straight-flowing melody anymore. Instead, it's much more intensely rhythmic music, as you can hear. Really like the vocals on this one too. Very tortured and burzemic sounding. But also not quite as abrasive as what Varg would do. Which fits with the fact that this is very catchy black metal. Not necessarily um, hateful, but definitely confrontational and threatening. And kind of a jolly, you know, Norse, battle lust, war, fury type, berserker rage sort of way. Like you're out with your homies and you're stabbing people and shit, but you're also drinking meat and whatnot. Another interesting thing he brought in this album, this is this idea of kind of a higher pitched trebly melody being played over a bed of more rhythmic guitar work, like right here, this sort of cyclic melodic figure. It crops up throughout the album. And it kind of twists in and out of the lower guitar layers. Sort of like uh, different voices in a choir or something. And I enjoy that quite a bit. Also, can we talk again about how great the production is on this album, especially compared to earlier Bill Skinner stuff? Clear instrumental separation. The bass, that's the other Joy Division vibe I get, is how loud the bass is, in addition to how the drums, despite being real drums, are played in a very mechanistic sort of fashion which overall makes for an interesting effect not often found in other black metal this is certainly the most unique sounding Bill Skrineer album but the guitar layers are just coming at you hot and heavy on this and again there's not as much kind of very <laughs> tremolo picking type stuff with the guitars instead it's all rather percussive sounding even when he's doing bar chord riffs like this he's picking out the individual notes doo -doo 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 -doo, and putting emphasis on each of them in term to maintain that overall sort of like marching feeling this is my favorite song song and muspels the sun as in you know that shiny thing up in the sky of muspelheim very very pagan album obviously if you don't know what muspelheim is that would be uh Norse for a big place full of fucking fire that's going to burn the world clean during Ragnarok. So it's deadly and apocalyptic, but also strangely joyful in a way. Nice little counterpoint here to that initial sort of chug riff. And again, that very danceable drum beat. And the vocals used as a percussive texture as the, the uh, melodic thing loops in on itself every other time he just goes ah marking off the different sections of the music then the vocals kick in here this riff is fucking great kind of just moving up and down the neck with the dinner dinner at the end of it very smartly composed very catchy stuff and that applies to the album as a whole if I was to fully go in depth about why this album rocks, I would just play the entire album for you, but we don't have time for that. And I don't know how intelligently I could comment on like the contents of the entire album, but it's great, you know, get it if you can. Unfortunately, there hasn't been any new stuff from him since this album came out. There was an EP that was actually composed of songs written and recorded in between Voltan's Volk and uh, Voltan Redivivius. That's a hard word to say. That came out in 2018, but, you know, like, that's actually a little bit older material than that newest album, but I'm okay with waiting for quality. He doesn't put albums very often, but when he does, especially 
Now that this last album is out, I would consider it a major event because he is one of the leading compositional voices on the bleeding edge of very, very good black metal, and I would heartily recommend at least checking out the most recent Bill Skrineer album, and then maybe working your way backwards through the catalog. So have fun with that, I'll see you. I was dating this perfect girl, but she, uh, she wouldn't listen to me about <laughs> So I broke up with her. Now I'm, I've been single for two years. She's a, such a cunt. What a cunt. She wouldn't listen to me. Twice. I tried telling her about... Mama. I gave her a reading list of Mama. books, and she only, she only read half of one of them. And then she stopped. Ah, I want a perfect waifu. Yeah. Yeah, man. What up? What up? What up? What up? What's in the towel? Came up to me and said, what's going Said purse! Can't insult me words I don't know. Try it, girl!